Robert, you've been, you know, closer to experiencing death than I have, you know, with your kidney and different things that have happened to you. And, um, and that whole process of, of dealing with your own vulnerability, your own immortality is a really powerful thing. And I just wondered where your spiritual aspect is, because I, you know, I have my hip replaced and I'm basically a sissy, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember one time I cut my hand, you know, cutting the the turkey down at Margie's house, you know, and I'm in the bathroom like this. I didn't even want to look, you know. And so Margie's mother sees the knife on the floor and a little blood. She said, what happened? Oh, Margie, Margie says, oh, Ken must have cut himself. He's in the bathroom not wanting to look. You know, I mean, so, I mean, that's a, that, so when I had my hip uh, done, you know, I have really gotten through some friends like Charlie Tremendous Jones and other people, gotten peaceful in my life that, if the Lord called me tomorrow, I would be peaceful because I have a sense that what's coming after this might even be better than this. I want to be the last one to learn that that's not true. So I feel peaceful, but I also am excited if I get to stay here, that there are things to do, not just to sit and watch my body deteriorate and all. I really have a sense in the next 20, 25 years, if I got that, that the potential impact I can make in the world is significantly more than what I've done up to this time. So I'm kind of excited about that. And so, but uh, where are you? Because I mean, you really were really close to, yeah. to to that. How did your spirituality help you there? You know, my spirituality was mixed with everybody I love's spirituality. Mm -hmm. And it was a time where I really asked everyone to pray for me and to send me just courage and faith and trust mm -hmm. and just kind of the, the, the love and the trust to know that no matter what happens, that the love and the trust and the faith can still be there. Mm -hmm. Even if the kidney transplant yeah. that I was having didn't work, yeah. my prayer was, may I have the courage and faith to deal with whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And of course, I would like the kidney to work. Sure. But I wanted to keep my dedication to being able to be loving and, and, and trusting that I could handle even if I had to go on dialysis. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I, was, I was afraid. And with that fear, was, it was as if there was this ocean of love around me. Mm -hmm. That and, and, and trust and peace. And so I had this voice inside going on, well, of course you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Of course you are. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly natural to be afraid. Sure. And at the same time, there was this enormous feeling, mm -hmm. not only knowing, feeling of trust and love that, that just allowed the experience to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds like a contradiction, yeah. but it was really the emotional state and the trust in the faith were just partners. And it wasn't any kind of a one-dimensional experience. It was utterly two-dimensional. I don't think I had any times where I was just in fear mm -hmm. or just in faith. Mm -hmm. And so the combination of the two just seemed like it created enormous peace. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be purely evolved yeah. to have absolute yeah. faith. Mm -hmm. And fear wasn't in any way running mm -hmm. the show. And the community of friends, the love that they sent me, yeah. just, I know, was an overwhelming influence. And it sounds like that whole process and like looking at the faith and the fear and all permitted you to uh, not be as emotionally tied up to the outcome. Exactly. And that's what was the peaceful thing for me when I got to the point to say, I can live with the outcome either way. And then that permitted me to take in the love and the other things because I wouldn't say, pray with me, so it's going to be successful or that, you know, send me the love so I can send it back to you because I'm going to be all right no matter what. Yeah. And whatever part of me feels or would, would have felt 
incredible loss, yeah. incredible disappointment. Sure. I can still be loved while I'm in the state of loss and disappointment too. Mm -hmm. And so even it wasn't as if I was going to be just love or just faith. Yeah. I was going to still stay as a human being and I was going to be able to have access to the love. Mm -hmm. And it was the two together again. Because mm -hmm. as I visualized a worst case scenario happening, I didn't have any illusion that I was going to go, yes, yeah. I'm now on dialysis. Yeah. It was going to be, <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be, you know, a, a certain element of probably some kind of a, a depressive feeling for a while right. and the faith to know, the trust to know that one leg would move in front of each other. Mm -hmm. And I still was going to be dedicated to the same life that I wanted to live otherwise. Mm -hmm.